Uh, greetings, fellow mystery lovers. Hope you're all having a spectacular Saturday. And yes, I am wearing a deer stalker. I forgot to wear it yesterday, but I'm, well, I'm making over it by wearing one today. So, there you go. <laughs> Anywho, so welcome to day two of Mystery March 2019. And today, our look at Sherlock continues with the blind banker. So, here we go. At the National Antiquities Museum, Chinese party expert Su Ling Yao sees something, sees something frightening, then disappears. Meanwhile, Sherlock takes John to high-powered international finan finance house. There, Sebastian Wilkes, an old university acquaintance of Sherlock's, asks for help. A breaking occurred in which an apparent meaningless pair of symbols were spray-painted onto a portrait of a banker. Sherlock realizes that it was a message meant for one man, Edward Van Coon of the Hong Kong desk, who has not come to work. Sherlock breaks into Van Coon's locked flat and finds him dead. There, under, detec under Detective Inspector Dimmick, regarded the pl yeah, sorry, the police under Detective Inspector Dimmick regarded it as a suicide, though Sherlock sees it as a murder. Soon, journalist Brian Lucas is also killed inside his locked flat. Sherlock and John investigate, and in the library where Lucas had been, they find the same mysterious symbols painted on a shelf. Hmm, interesting. John seeking financial security, obtains a job as a locum at a local surgery run by Dr. Sarah Sawyer. Later, Sherlock and John discover a link between the two men. Both had just returned from China, and both went to an oriental curio shop, the Lucky Cat. There, Holmes learns that the symbols are ancient Chinese, Hen or ancient Chinese Henzu numerals. Sherlock enters Su Lin's empty flight and finds an intruder. A brief fight ensues, but the attacker flees. At the museum, they then discover the same symbols on a statue. Then, with the help of graffiti artist Raz, Sherlock and John find more symbols graffitied on a wall and struggle to decode the message. Back at the museum, Holmes surprises Su Lin in hiding, who explains the code is linked to the criminal ring Black Lotus Tong, of which she was, of which she was once a member. Unfortunately, before she can fully decode the message, she is killed by her brother, who is also a member of the criminal gang. Sherlock realizes Van Coon and Lucas are members of the Tong, involved in smuggling valuable antiquities to sell in London, and they were killed because one of them stole something. Bum bum bum. Sherlock knows the mu Sherlock knows the message is in the form of a book cipher, and he and John spend the night going through the first two victims' books, trying to find the solution. John's first day at work does not go well, but Sarah covers for him, and Sherlock arranges tickets to a traveling Chinese circus. While John and Sarah enjoy the classic escapology and acrobatic acts, Sherlock snoops around backstage and is attacked, but with Sarah and John's help, the three escape. While Sherlock continues to search for the solution to the book cipher, John and Sarah are kidnapped. John's mistake for Sherlock by the villains want him to reveal the location of the missing treasure in return for Sarah's life. Fortunately, Sherlock cracks the code in using an A to Z London Street Atlas guide and rescues John and Sarah. He also realizes the elusive treasure had been in plain sight all the time. Had been in plain sight all the time. A jade hairpin belonging to the Chinese royal family being worn by Van Coon's secretary's hush mistress, Amanda, who had received it as a gift from Van Coon. However, Shan, the group's leader, escapes, contacting a person identified only by the initial M who would help the gang to get a foothold in London. The episode ends with the sniper shooting Shan after M believes that Shan will fail them again. Oh boy, that's, uh, interesting. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's look at some allusions here. According to Moffat, the episode takes the concept of coded messages from The Adventure of the Dancing Men using pic pictorial messages. Anne Kisslier of Newsarama had pointed out other potential inspirations such as the Valley of Fear, such as the use in the Valley of Fear of a code, quote, based on a book that many people would own. A murder victim found in a log room accessible only by climbing might be an allusion to the sign of the four. Hmm. That's interesting. So overall, I say this episode is pretty good and it's fairly enjoyable as well and 
I wouldn't say it's better than a study in pink, but it's in the middle, I guess. So overall, I give the blind banker three deer stalkers out of five. We'll join you tomorrow as we continue on with the great game. So until tomorrow, remember, the game is afoot.